And is your name indeed Martha? Yeah, only by the IRS of my mother. In either case, I'm in trouble. So if you call me Marty, I'd be much happier. Thank okay. you. Okay, Marty, we're glad to have you. And the regional elders, uh, what we do once a month, we have a prayer meeting and pray for the different joys and concerns mm -hmm. with our ministers and um, and other things that are going on. And that's what we're going to do uh, to start out this evening, and, and then we'll visit a little bit. So we're th thrilled to have you with us. Well, thank you. And Ryan, would you be the elder that would be representing my area if I'm from Rogers? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. That's correct. Okay. Now I'll mute myself and just enjoy listening. Thank you very yeah. much. Awesome. And feel free to talk if you would like to. Thank you. Sure. Okay, well, Zena, we will turn it over to you, and uh, we're glad that you can be with us, and uh, hopefully... Well, I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad to be with you all as well. I'm traveling, and I'll turn on my camera just a minute so you guys can see that, I know if I will do that or not. Um, <laughs> um, it, it's dark. Bobby saw me earlier. She, she saw that it was dark. <laughs> Um, I've been to a funeral today, and I've been to a wedding today. Um, I wore my mask, um, and just for uh, just just so you know, Dan is driving, so I'm not uh, so I'm not driving and and doing this as well. Um, so he's with he's with us today. Um, the the funeral and the wedding um, really uh, got me thinking about uh, the newness of every day. Um, the newness of um, a new marriage, the newness of life uh, without loved ones. And so I um, always, and I, and I may have shared this, pro this poem with you before, and, and forgive me, but it's, it's a good one. It's by Sister Macrina Wiedeker, who um, died this past year, um, I guess in 2020 as well. Um, she is a beloved writer and spiritual leader. Um, Judy Turner and Sister Macrina, I think, became fast friends when Judy was um, uh, doing some work at St. Scholastica in Fort Smith. And so I wanted to start with this uh, morning prayer um, is, what, uh, is what she called it. And what I would like to do is uh, give you most of the prayer um, and then I'll end with the, the last bit of the poem. But every so often, I'm going to say, um, with hope, and then I hope that you all will join me in saying, we offer these prayers. Or I might say, with trust. And then I hope that you all will join me in saying, we offer these prayers. So that's scattered through our list tonight. And so um, as we gather here, um, and uh, ready our hearts and our minds. Um, let's go um, into, uh, into this prayer of Sister Macrina Wiedekers. A radiant dawn, O loving God, as the day begins to tell of your glory, etch into our hearts a bit of heaven that we may take your light wherever we may go. Shine on us, in us and through us, just as your sun shines in the sky. Give us light that we may see your new green, the new greening power within us. Give us enough, enough lightning and storms to shake up our soil. Enough wind to keep us spirit. Zena, you hit mute. Okay, when did I hit mute? Something after the spirit. Okay. Maybe. I don't know how I did that, but of course, you know me and my buttons in my car. Spirit um, and wind, I think, is where you left off. Okay. Enough wind to keep us spirited, enough death to bring us life and enough goodness to help us remember who we are. We pray for our brothers and our sisters, the churches of the Northwest and the Northeast Mississippi region, 
Nerlene, as she has lost a good friend, Susie, to COVID, we pray for all we have lost to COVID this year. We pray for Nerlene as she provides comfort for Susie's family. We pray a special prayer for East Percy Christian Church of Greenwood as they pro provide prayers and comforts for families that have been affected by growing violence in their communities. We pray for teachers and the students at this time with COVID rising. With hope, we offer these prayers. We pray for Nadine Burton's brother, Tony, who is dealing with esophageal cancer. We pray for peace and unity and justice in our nation. We pray for all our ministers and church leaders concerning important decisions throughout this time affected by COVID-19. We pray for Nadine as she continues to lead our region and for the support staff, Kristen and Tanika, Jason Ferguson at All Souls, All Souls Church in Scott, Arkansas and Jason's brother, Jason's brother's ill with COVID. So we pray for that family. We pray for Stephen Sherrill at Park Hill Christian Church, North Little Rock. Stephen's brother and family have all tested positive for COVID. We pray for strength and comfort and healing. We pray for Joe Jorgensen at First Christian Church in Benton, Arkansas. He recently began a new ministry at First Christian in Durant, Oklahoma. We pray for, pray for Holly Patton, recovering from surgery on an arm to remove a metal plate from a previous surgery. We pray for healing of that old wound. We pray for Sarah Rudolph Pollard at Mount Sinai Christian. She has severe back pain and a nerve block was done Wednesday. We hope that it gives her comfort. We pray for Robert Palmer, Cross Street Christian Church in Little Rock. We pray for his youngest brother, William Palmer. Bill, who continues to have issues regarding a recent stroke. We pray for Hickory Heights Healthcare, who is taking care of him. And we pray for Robert's mother and also his older brother Vaughn, other brother Vaughn. We pray for Cersei and Betty McBurnett. Cersei's in hospice care and his wife is dealing with a lot of foot issues. With trust, we offer these prayers. From Laura Deman, we pray for Kings Highway Christian Church in Shreveport and First Christian Church in Bowser City as both congregations search for a senior minister. From Holly Joe, we pray for Pastor David and Debbie Langston, prayers for their congregation as they have lost members to COVID and to, that their board can make the proper decisions about meeting in person. We pray for Pastor Gil Hogue, for their congregation and that but everyone is but it, but it is a joy that he is healthy we pray for pastor don martin we pray for their congregation as they deal with all that they have to deal with at this time we pray for holly joe's school blytheville school district or, which is blytheville school district COVID is hitting the teachers and the students pretty hard and they've been completely virtual on and off for the last month. It's very difficult for teachers and students to go back and forth and we pray for their patience and for uh, some continuity as we learn how to deal with this. Holly Jo sends a joy. Her mother Dana Jo Hughes had a scan done on Friday that showed fluid buildup and a spot on her bone that was very suspicious. They took her in on Monday to have the biopsy and the fluid and spot came back completely gone. We praise God for this in our prayers. We offer with hope, we offer these prayers. Randy J at, in First Christian, First Christian Fort Smith asked for prayers for our nation. Our interim minister, Ellis Robin made that request too. We also ask for your prayers of support at, and healing for Julie J, 
Randy's wife. She will be having knee surgery soon. We lift up prayers for Rita Richardson's brother, Kenneth, as he continues to deal with chronic health issues. Casey Young asks for prayers to you, O oh God, as they wait for the restoration on their home to be complete following the fire in her kitchen. Her daughters require special care and assistance and being out of their space makes your ability to cope just a little more challenging. We pray for Brad and Brooksine Kidder who continue to deal with the isolation associated with aging and that's all compounded by the pandemic. Pray for them and pray and we pray for ourselves that we know the comfort and the presence of our Holy Creator. From Ryan and Cheryl, we pray for peace for our country as we wait for the final, well, we got the final election results, but at least partly. Um, and we pray for the calm after the announcement today. We pray for the healing for our divisions. We pray for Terry Ro uh, Rother Mitch in Rogers, Arkansas who seeks prayer for his older and his younger brother who are enduring multiple serious health issues and for church leaders at First Christian Church in Rogers as they navigate their first sanctuary in sanctuary worship this Sunday. They're following COVID protocols and we pray that those go well for that congregation. We continue our prayers, Reverend John and Judy Turner in Eureka Springs for discernment and for John's health. We pray that all pastors are lifted up, um, careful and considerate ministry to their members and churches during this challenging time. With trust, we offer these prayers. From Ann Pickett Parkett, Parker, we pray for the family of Jordan McCovery He's a teenage best friend of Anne's granddaughter, Claudia, who died suddenly last week. We pray that all who surround his family can give them the comfort that they need. We pray for Anne's husband and daughter, James and Patrice. We pray for a new generation Christian fellowship. They begin their worship on Sunday, two Sundays each month. We pray for all who are affected by COVID and all who have died. And shares a joy. We pray that the AP, AARP chapter, um, they submitted Anne's name for the Andrus Award Volunteer of the Year, and she won the award for the state of Mississippi. We praise God for what, for such a joyful news and surprise and honor for Anne. She says it was um, for past deeds because the year has found me not volunteering. So, but we know that Anne is still praying. From Percy Terrell, prayers for Percy's wife, Laura, that her diabetes will be under control. Um, she has a problem with her foot. And so it's important that um, we lift them up uh, so that she might not, uh, so she might be able to discern what she needs to do to keep that foot from being amputated. And we lift up prayers for church services to continue in worship to uplift the name of Jesus and praise his name. With hope, we offer these prayers. From Don Warren, we pray for his mother. She's lost one of her two remaining sisters. It's difficult when we enter a world um, that, as our family members uh, leave us. We pray for Kevin Roberts of First Christian in Whitehall. We keep Don White in our prayers and his congregation. And we pray for Kirkland Warren. We pray for our nation and the president. We pray for Joanna Walker Flowers, who is the minister at First Christian Church in Harrison, Arkansas. From Bobby, we pray for Bobby and Robert and Randy and their family and the congregation of First Christian Sulphur, Louisiana. We pray for Vince and Amy Endress and family. 
and the congregation of First Christian Lake Charles as they continue to deal with the massive hurricane damage. We pray for Jarrett Banks and his father and their family. Jarrett's father had heart replacement surgery and he's now recovering. We pray for Vince Endress, hurricane recovery, and a house that may be rebuilt by February. We pray for David Chisholm and for his brother, Dan. We pray for Bobby and Randy again, and that the demolition of their home will finish quickly and that the sale of the church uh, and property is, uh, is quickly complete. I did not ask earlier if there are additional prayers that we need to add. Please pray for Angie Kretzer, uh, who's dealing with the isolation of COVID-19. We lift up the prayers for Angie. As we finish this prayer, gracious God, we pray for our national leaders, young and seasoned. Give them the grace and humility that is required to balance the tension between the peoples of this nation. We pray that we can recenter our democracy on a common unity and a collective good. We end this prayer with Sister Macrina's words. With trust, we expect that these prayers will come true in our lives and in the lives of those we serve. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Zena. Glad the technology in the car worked. This technology is amazing. It, it truly is. Um, thank you for leading us, Zena. And um, really appreciate the, the heartfelt prayers and, and once again for, for the collective efforts of all of our regional elders as we continue to reach out to the ministers and our shepherding groups and uh, to keep in touch with them and, and to bring the, the joys and concerns each month as, as we uh, get to share in prayer together. I was reminded this morning, uh, listening to Nadine in her uh, State of the Region uh, talk about uh, her desire that, that we continue to be a praying church, a praying region. And I don't know about you all, but since we shifted in our monthly regional elders meetings to focusing and actually praying, it has meant a great deal more to me. And uh, I hope the same is true for you all. And uh, as we continue in this uh, prayer effort, and uh, it's just such a great privilege to get to, um, to, to be part of this and to, to be part of it with you. Uh, I'm not seeing Anne unless that's her with a tell. I see a telephone number, but I don't. I saw Anne's name earlier, did? But I'm not sure what happened here. Anyway, Anne put it in the chat that she was at another meeting. Okay, okay. I I didn't expect to see her at all, so that was a bonus to to uh, see her briefly. Uh, and, and again, welcome to Marty and to Stephen uh, joining us this, this evening. Uh, thanks to Tanika, uh, who's back behind Nadine Burton's name someplace, making sure that, uh, that we stay connected on this visit this evening. Uh, Zena, as you were, as you were praying and, and part of the prayer request is, uh, uh, certainly from Holly Joe uh, about how uh, the need for prayer for the for those involved in schools 
if you're if you feel up to it, Zena, what is it like? Uh, what what's it like being in the in the schools right now? I know you're very much in the thick of things as you work for the Fort Smith School District. Uh, what's it like for people like you and and teachers and administrators and students and others that work so that we could be more sensitive in 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 our in our hearts and our minds and certainly in our prayers. Okay. Um, so teachers and students um, are doing a remarkable thing. Um, they are uh, teaching and learning um, in much the same way that they have been, but they're just much smaller groups. Um, there is a fear um, of the that the virus will um, will somehow sicken those in schools. And so they're dealing with um, just uh, that underlying uh, current of, of fear. Um, but the teachers continue to, to take care of their students um, in the same ways that, you know, that they have uh, been expected to do. Um, I was in, and the best way to go about this was, you know, I was in a kindergarten class the other day and uh, I was taking a teacher, a 20 year pen. And of course, you know, we've never, none of us have ever done, you know, done this. And so we're, you know, trying to limit our um, entrance and exit out of the, um, the schools. And um, we, uh, having to get the masks on the kids because we wanted to get a, you know, get a picture. And one little girl, Alice, she just couldn't find her, couldn't find her mask. And so we, all the other children were um, uh, lined up, ready to go. And, and Alice was still kind of wandering around. And as I was watching the teacher take care of Alice and the other children kind of watching and reaching out to take care of Alice when, you know, when, when she finally did find her mask, um, it, it, uh, was just heartwarming um, to see that happening. Um, but as I got ready to leave, um, they wanted to see what I was doing. And, uh, and I was, I had taken a couple of pictures and they, uh, and so I held out my, my phone so they could see one set of pictures. And I, and I got pretty close to them, but the teacher said, no, we can't, we have to keep her safe. Um, and uh, and it just took me by surprise. And I said, well, you know, I need to keep you all safe too. And so that's why I'm standing back, but it's just a whole new way of doing things. Our, you know, our teachers are doing virtual, um, but there many of them in Fort Smith, we're very, uh, uh, we're very lucky that we can have a, a group of teachers set aside or assigned to virtual learning. Many of the many of the smaller districts don't have the resources that they um, that we do, and so they're teaching both on-site learning and they're um, managing the virtual learning that has to happen as well. So prayers um, to all of the smaller districts district teachers who really are doing two jobs or three jobs. Um, for um, administrators, um, there's very little that that we can really tell people because of, you know, HIPAA requirements and FERPA requirements and all those different um, acronyms. And so it's, you know, it's distressing uh, on a certain level to just have to keep telling people um, the same thing over and over again. Um, and so prayers to administrators who are just trying to assure parents and teachers um, that, um, that we hope that what we're doing is going to be good enough. So um, is there, do you have any specific questions? That, that sure helps just to, to hear from someone in there uh, like you who's 
day in and day out saying things and ha has a greater understanding. I'm certainly, uh, I, I, I don't have a good feel for this since we don't have any family members in, in school. Uh, and uh, it, it helps to heighten my awareness of, of what's going on. Uh, so thank you, Zena. Does anybody- I have a, I have a question. Um, yes. Can you, can you hear me okay? I am an old school nurse and I'm trying to wrap my mind around what the nurse's office looks like. Oh, um, yeah. So <laughs> the state of the Arkansas Department of Health and then the Department of, and, of Elementary and Secondary Education have a number of requirements that we have to meet. Um, and one of those requirements is that we have isolation spaces. So many nurses stations somewhere close to the nurses stations, there are these little isolation bubbles. I don't know if you guys remember that old movie, Boy in the Plastic Bubble. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we have created some of the most interesting isolation spaces. Um, Really, what's happening with any student who becomes, um, you know, who, who has, ends up with a positive test, oftentimes they're not in the school um, when they, uh, by the time that they start um, uh, experiencing symptoms, when they're experiencing symptoms, they don't come to school. And so we're very lucky in Fort Smith particularly that um, the spread of COVID hadn't, we haven't seen the spread of COVID happening in schools. What we're seeing is that they, um, that they come to school having been exposed someplace else. So we do have, again, we have resources that have allowed us to have a nurse in nearly every school. Um, and they are just uh, taking care of the regular stuff that happens, which is more than, you know, than COVID, uh, but then they manage the COVID piece as well. Um, everybody wears masks, everywhere, everyone wears gloves. Our maintenance teams are sanitizing the buildings um, regularly, and then they sanitize the buildings and rooms um, more regularly if we have a positive case. So nurses are, um, are just like the teachers. Um, they're uh, they're dealing with the regular stuff, and then they're dealing with COVID too. Don Warren's married to a teacher, um, Harriet. Don, how's Harriet doing with all that's going on in her teaching environment? It is extremely difficult. Um, she never knows how many students she's going to have day to day. Uh, Last count, there were four, and you know the the lesson planning, the the scheduling. It it is taking mm -hmm. its toll on my wife, but she she's had plenty of practice of tough times being married to me for thirty five years. So it's tough. It is really tough, um, and thank you to your wife, um, I, Miles. I wanted to add one other thing. Um, that I hadn't thought of, um, you know, we've been, um, everyone, all the schools are experimenting with what might work, what might help kids, what might help keep students safe. And so one of the things that we did for older kids, and we've done this all over the state and all over the nation, and everyone's finding the same result, um, we gave we gave our kids in the high school grades too much latitude. And, you know, there, you know, there are incredible numbers of these children who are failing now um, because they just, they're children and they don't have the, they don't have the discipline or, and, and that's not a good way to put it. They don't have the capacity yet to um, ensure their own destiny. And so we've got to back 
up and figure out how to get these kids back in the classroom, in a safe classroom, so that we can help them um, recover the credits they're losing um, or might are in danger of losing and so that they can graduate on time. So there's a lot of been, you know, there's been a lot of things that we've done to try to help and, and we've got to figure out, we had to back up and, and uh, re, rethink how we provide instruction specifically to the 10th through 12th graders, some, sometimes 9th through 12th graders. I can chime in on that. We're raising our great nephews and our younger great nephew is a high school senior this year. This past Thursday was his first day of school. Uh, they pushed to start the day back a, a week and then another week and then the hurricanes hit and all the schools were damaged tremendously. And so he just started back Thursday. In the meantime, they were ostensibly doing virtual education but nobody yeah. had internet. We didn't, for a while there, we didn't even have power and it, it's only been a few weeks since we've had internet in our area, which means that I know Connor is not the only one. He didn't do a thing. Not one bit of virtual education went on. And then add to that, that one of his primary classes this year is welding. And I still don't understand how he's going to do that virtually, nor does he. Yeah. Uh, it's a real problem. It is a challenge. I, I also am really worried about the chasm that's getting so much larger between the haves and the have nots. We already had one before the pandemic hit. Um, but uh, Bobby, I appreciate you sharing your situation because that's not a have and have not other than which you'll experience from losing things from the hurricane. But, um, but I just, I really worry about those kids that are barely hanging on within our society anyway. And this is just one more thing on top of all that. So it's, it's a deep concern. Any other questions or, or comments that from anyone that can help heighten our awareness uh, of what's going on to make us more sensitive in our prayer life or all that's going on concerning the learning experiences and challenges? Thank you all for, for sharing that. I would also, uh, if you all are willing uh, to, to share with us, um, also to help us gain a better understanding of what life is like uh, post hurricanes. Uh, uh, for those who've not ever experienced that, it's hard to fathom what that is, uh, what that's like. And uh, I know that Bobby uh, and Randy and family have just really been through it uh, uh, along with others, but looking at who's on the screen tonight and uh, Stephen uh, to an extent and, and uh, so how are things with you all and how can we best be praying for you all and, and uh, what needs do you all have? Well, th this is Steve Thompson. In our area, there was damage, but it wasn't as severe as uh, the West part. Over, we had probably the most violent wind we've ever had of hurricane that I've experienced. I've been through uh, Katrina and uh, uh, hurricane since then, and um, this this was probably the most violent winds we've ever seen. And and I guess one of my concerns, and it's been this concern for a long period of time here, is is the issue of climate change or global warming or whatever you want to call it. That uh, you have a dialogue then, and how our theology may contrib contribute to 
a blindness to those particular issues sometimes and uh, how we need to address those issues, not only in planning, but also in helping people to appreciate the seriousness of, of uh, this climate change. It's just not a matter of the earth warming up, but we're gonna get more violent storms. And the fact that we have a, a storm right now in the Gulf that may be heading toward Florida, uh, we're getting more and more and later and more violent and that's escalating. Yeah, I think this is, I, I've talked with people, I think this is gonna become the norm for the Gulf Coast area down here. We're gonna to need to be prepared for these, this level of storm. Each time one of these huge storms hits, and, and we're getting more of them, it seems, it removes the buffer <clears throat> inland. You know, we always knew the coastal areas like Cameron were going to get destroyed every time there was a hurricane. But now it's way north of there that's getting destroyed because there's no buffer between the coastline and, for example, Lake Charles. Leesville. Leesville's way north of the coast. Two and a half hours, maybe, and and they took a tremendous amount of damage in uh, Hurricane Laura. So that's added to the climate change issue. Is we've lost the things that stood between um, the, the more populated areas and the coastline. Uh, we don't have trees anymore. The whole. Uh, terrain has changed. I live um, just north of Interstate 10 and uh, if you've been in the Lake Charles area you know we have that that bridge. You know the one I'm talking about. Uh, uh, you used to couldn't see it from my house but you can now because so many trees are gone. Our, our landscape looks different. Uh, I, I don't even have words for what I'm seeing because I drive around and I just oh so sad so sad the trees are crying and of course our houses oh my goodness but it's a joy to see people working together and uh, to be honest in my church uh, our attendance has not been affected yet we only had six people the uh, two days after hurricane uh, delta and we were worshiping outside. But after that, it picked right back up again to our normal standard, which isn't all that high, but at least you know everybody was there. The church is hanging in there. Your words, Bobby, um, today, as you were standing right outside the, the door of the church and what you shared, from your personal experience and, and uh, sharing about the greater church as uh, symbolized by Week of Compassion uh, was, was, was there to help and, and keeping in touch with you. That was all very powerful to me. Uh, and I really appreciated uh, you doing that. I was, I was thinking how, how are you staying so uh, in control of your emotions as you talk about all this? I just can't imagine what you uh, what you all have been through and are going through, and yet you 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 were calm and collected, <laughs> but just shared beautifully, and it was it was very powerful and meaningful. I can tell you the truth that twice during that worship service, I almost lost it. Uh, sitting here with my little computer and nobody would have known, I don't think, but when uh, Nadine talked about the hurricane damage and I don't remember when the other one was, but the damage to our homes, it, that really personalizes it. In, in our case, our church had very minimal damage and we've had a, a church member step forward and he's going to fix it for us. Of course, we're going to pay him, but uh, it, it really does hit home, so to speak, when, you, when your house is kind of in pieces around you. And I'm a little bit OCD, uh, that may be an understatement. And it really, um, I like to have everything in order. And so it, it is kind of hard to hold it together. I, I am so grateful to Miles and to uh, the regional elder relationship uh, right after the storm hit. And I've shared this with many of you that 
uh, I didn't call all of my people that I was supposed to call uh, to check and see how, but they checked on me. Almost every person in my shepherding group checked to see how we were doing after the storm. That's so uplifting, which reminds me of my mind is going off in a, a, a 45 degree angle here. The regional elders pray once a month, but I want you to know, and you know, if you're one of the, if you're part of the regional elders group, that these updates that we get during the month from Miles and from other members keep us praying, and I think that keeps us accountable uh, to our task, to our to our calling, that we don't just pray once a month. Oh my goodness, no, we pray without ceasing. Miles, uh, one of the things I think is terribly important to, that uh, Bobby hit on and needs to be uh, illuminated even further probably, and that is the emotional trauma that people go through with hurricanes. It's not just the trauma that occurs at the time of the event, but the subsequent re-traumatization that occurs with successive storms. And uh, if the magnitude of the damage is excessive, then it, it not only affects their personal well-being, but it affects their family members and other people they care about. And uh, it becomes overwhelming emotionally. And then and it's even beyond, our, our daughter is uh, the operations manager for the Southeast Louisiana uh, Group uh, for Enterprise Rent-A-Car. And she covers all of Southeast, South Louisiana, you know, and she said in Lake Charles, I rebuilt that back in Katrina. I'm rebuilding again. I'm tired of doing this. You know, it's one thing after another. And then, and then you're dealing with people. The other thing is you're dealing with people at times who have no experience with it. For example, one of the things she said was her boss wanted to know if before the storm hit, if she had enough sandbags. And she said, sandbags will be worthless if this storm comes in at its magnitude, it will take the roof off the building. And that's literally what it did. Just took the roof off. Sandbags didn't matter. People don't understand it when they're a distance away from this. The other thing I think it may be important that Ryan picked up on, and that is uh, income redistribution. It's not just the general, but tr disasters like this. One of the things I, I noted for people in Katrina when it occurred that Katrina wasn't a disaster for everybody. It was an income, it was a, a, a wealth redistribution is what it was. Some people lost and some people made money. I know people who made lots of money on recovery efforts and stuff, uh, do working for FEMA and other things. And made, you know, I, knew, I knew attorneys who left their, their practice to shoot photography for, the, uh, for FEMA and they were making $1,000 a day doing it. You know, so there's, there's, there's money out there to be made and then money to be lost. And other people who uh, lost their homes got money for the from the insurance and then had contractors who, who went out of town and stole the money from them you know it it's a it's a, a redistribution of assets is really what it is thank you for sharing that steve it, it helps us to to hear um and to learn uh, because it is difficult to understand when we're not there and and haven't haven't experienced it. I I have to a certain degree. I was in in uh, Hurricane Betsy in '65 and Camille in '69, but I wasn't a father and a, a husband. I was a kid, yeah. and there's a big difference. Even though it was frightening and and going through all that, it's not. It's not the same when you don't feel responsible for your family and 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 all of that. Uh, nonetheless, uh, every every time I see a storm brewing in the Gulf heading toward our precious area, uh, it it stirs deep within me. I can assure you, uh, this isn't about me, but I I always feel my stomach churning big time. But all this conversation about uh, the schools and, and uh, the hurricanes and the damage and as I, you know, as I look at you all on the screen, those that I can see your faces and others that I see you by your name, uh, I realize that we're all going through things. Uh, different things, sometimes similar, but different things. Some of you in the prayer time that Zena led us in, 
um, ask for prayers for our own within our own family. Uh, Percy, we continue to pray for Laura and her uh, bout with diabetes and, and praying so hard that uh, the, the amputation won't have to take place. And Don uh, sharing news of death within his family. And, and I, I know the same that has been fairly recent with, with Zena and uh and just lots of other things it reminds me that as regional elders and i'm not at all trying to leave out marty and steve and i see a name ralph here and and we're glad you're here ralph whoever you are and i see a phone number and i don't know who that is but we're glad you're here too but our regional elders i look at you all and i realize that you all are you all are shepherding and taking care of of uh, of others of, of ministers and and who is uh, who's really taking care of you and I I want to offer a sincere apology that I don't do more for you uh, reaching out to you and and I, I hope I can do better uh, but uh, I can assure you that I think about each and every one of you and hold you very dear in my heart and and uh, and, and pray for you so. Uh, appreciate all of you very, very much. There was no agenda of topics. These were just sort of things that uh, I, I felt led to ask about, and I appreciate you all sharing. Uh, is there anything that you all would like to share about how you're doing personally or within your family or uh, how things are going for you and your regional eldering. Is there anything anyone would like to share this evening? I have a praise. We like praises. Um, my daughter was to get married in May and uh, she was marrying a gentleman from England. So they had decided to have a wedding in Cancun. And of course that didn't take place and it was postponed until October. And um, Reverend Sean Wallace and his wife uh, graciously agreed to go down and perform it. And uh, they were there when Hurricane Delta had them um, taken from their hotel to an inland space um, in a school room uh, uh, where they spent the night with 30 other people on a tile floor with one blanket. And of course, COVID is still very much an issue. And um, as Hurricane Delta was making land, it went from a four to a two. And um, they came out of the situation unscathed. And um, we're just incredibly grateful. That is a praise. Uh -huh. Thank you for sharing, Marty. We're grateful for our ministers, aren't we? Oh, so and their, grateful. And their spouses and families. Mm -hmm. So grateful. Do I see our, our uh, media past moderator's name here? Is Pastor Robert Palmer with us? Yes. Yes. Good afternoon or good evening. <laughs> uh, I um, wanted to just drop in. Uh, very quickly and, and say hello to everyone. And uh, and also I wanted to uh, thank you for the the uh, elders ministry for for assisting uh, many people uh, in times of praise and in times of prayer. And I uh, just wanted to to say thank you because uh, 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 Brother Miles has been uh, tremendous. Uh, we've been together through a lot of through a lot of things. Uh, we, we we were even together when we were voting on, on our regional uh, minister uh, from the hotel room 
of, a, of, a, of another, not a hotel room, but from a hospital room of a, one of our uh, other ministers, uh, Reverend Robert Brown. And so, uh, and so we, in, uh, in addition, you know, that, that, that there's, there's so many other things that we've been, been involved in with uh, funerals and uh, our, our, uh, our churches and, and different things of that nature. But I wanted to say that I thank you so much because uh, I had uh, expressed to um, uh, Miles uh, the situation where he knew the situation of my brother uh, having a stroke. And, uh, and going to the hospital and finding out that not only that he had a stroke, but they found out that he had some, uh, some injured uh, vertebrae. And so he had to have uh, operation on the front of his neck and the back of his neck. And uh, they were, there were all kinds of things. I was talking to uh, Dr. Burton about this earlier today, but uh, they were having questions on whether they wanted to operate because he had, he had a past problem with alcoholism. So uh, well, anyway, they, uh, I, I told my mom uh, that, uh, that the regional elders were, were going to pray uh, for, uh, for her because uh, uh, she's 90 years old and she's not able to, uh, you know, to stand for very long. And I didn't tell Miles this uh, about my other brother, uh, but they had discovered uh, the one that's supposed to be taking care of my mom. Uh, he had a spot on his lung, and uh, and they've been doing different things, you know, for him. And so, and he's and he wanted to take care of my younger brother, <laughs> and uh, he just not able to. And so, we were in need of prayer. And so, and so, and so, I, I told my mom that, and it just it just made her so happy that I told her that there were other people praying for. Her. And so, I just wanted to, to be sure and stop by and uh, and say thank you. And that uh, I know that uh, that as ministers, uh, we need prayer because a lot of things uh, fall on us, and uh, some things fall on us that we can't talk to other members about. So, but uh, but 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 there are members that you know that need operations, uh, that that are seeing things uh, wrong at the doctor's office, and and uh, and we cannot express that to others. Uh, all we can do is pray for them, and uh, and ask them to trust God. And uh, as we trust God to do his work. But, uh, you know, you know, the old saying, uh, little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. No prayer, no power. And so we believe uh, tremendously in, in the power of prayer. And uh, I just want to take that time, take this time to tell you all, thank you for that. All right, Miles, did I talk enough? <laughs> oh, all right it's good to hear your voice and and uh thank you robert for serving our region so well so faithfully so capably and uh you you've just been dynamite and uh i have the pleasure of getting to getting to see you more than uh some of the others but uh boy we really do appreciate you All right, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Am I muted now? No, I'm not muted. Okay, thank you so very, so, so very much. And, uh, and, and, uh, and of course, uh, we certainly have to uh, uh, once again uh, uh, thank uh, uh, Park Hill uh, Church for, for hosting this and for, uh, and for all of the, the, the members, uh, uh, Tianka and Kristen and, and, uh, and, and everyone for, for being able to allow us to do this. And of course, uh, and as I said uh, earlier, earlier today, uh, Logan's little fingers were just running all over the place. Uh, you know, I was in the uh, in the uh, sanctuary, as you know, all of this was going on, and uh, and they were pointing at me and telling me when to go and all this other kind of stuff. And so, uh, and so, we appreciate uh, that God has blessed us to have uh, that type of uh, resource. All right, I'm stopping. Absolutely. Thank you, Robert. We're glad you're we're glad you joined us tonight. And I'm well, going to mute. Um, 
As I said at the beginning, uh, I had not anticipated, at least for our regional elders, get together uh, going two hours and knowing that some of you are leading worship and preaching tomorrow and, and it's a busy taxing day and don't want to keep you up. Uh, uh, just want to make sure, is, is there anything else that any of you would like to share before we uh, sign off this evening? Well, if not, thank you, Tanika, for hosting us tonight. Thank you for all the work that you've put into the Regional Assembly, uh, all the behind the scenes mega hours and work that you've done. And uh, thrilled to have Marty and Steve join us and Ralph, uh, whoever you are, we're glad you're here too. And uh, it's, it's just good to be together. Uh, appreciate you all joining us tonight and uh so I, I wish you all well and i'll just uh I'll, I'll close this in prayer god it's been great to be together in the way that we have been able to in light of this pandemic in this virtual way we have looked at uh beyond the challenges and and have looked toward solutions to be able to to have our assembly and we've, we've enjoyed that. It's, it's just been so good to be together and we're grateful for all who have made that possible. Thank you for bringing us together, this group tonight and for all of us, wherever we are in the various parts of our region, uh, may we be blessed so that we can be a blessing to all that we're able to reach. Dismiss us with your special blessings and Continue to put it in our hearts to serve you as faithfully as we possibly can to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ in every way that we can. In all of this, we thank you and we pray through Christ our Savior. Amen. Well, thank you all. It's good to be with you. <laughs>